We all have a lot of clothes. It's something that we always need to have. Stuff for practical use, or perhaps something for a formal occasion. Then generally active wear, as well as something cool to wear out. Stuff for when it's hot or cold. Can't forget about some shoes. Okay, maybe a couple shoes. Also your favorite sports team or the college that you went to. Something to remind you of home. This one was a present. Well, this one was just a great TV. It's only five and absolutely neat. Oh, I can't get another one. But it all adds up kind of quickly. Whatever the reasoning behind it, we're almost all guilty of consuming massive amounts of clothing, and it's starting to become a problem. While it may have gone unnoticed for a long time, clothing has quickly become the second most polluting industry in the world behind the oil and gas industry. An average household's clothing takes a thousand bathtubs of water to produce, and the average consumer disposes of 70 pounds of textiles per year. The rise of fast fashion and consumerism have led to Americans throwing away nearly double the clothing they did 20 years ago. This has led to consumers starting to demand more sustainable clothing products, and companies are struggling to try to keep up. Many companies have started to create products with recycled materials, lower their total waste, and switch to less environmentally harmful production practices. All this is great on the surface, but it doesn't make nearly enough of an impact on the environmental issues surrounding clothing production and consumption. Clothing made from recycled materials does help eliminate some waste, but there are some drawbacks to the technology. Production with recycled materials uses more energy, water, and still creates waste because of the new product being created. While major clothing companies have set goals to have more sustainable and ethical production, many of them haven't met them. There are some companies making great strides in the world of sustainable fashion, but many of the largest clothing producers in the world haven't changed their habits. Essentially, the profitability model for these businesses doesn't match the necessary sustainability model of consumer consumption. This has allowed for a new wave of shoppers to start buying secondhand clothing, causing these businesses and individual sellers to grow rapidly. Unlike new clothing, buying used clothing does not generate any new waste. Additionally, the lifespan of that piece of clothing is greatly extended because it otherwise would have been considered waste or thrown out. This has allowed for several thrift stores and vintage shops to rapidly grow alongside the secondhand clothing industry. To get some insight on this, I spoke with three business owners who have seen the growth with their own eyes over the past couple years. Rio from Throwbacks Northwest, Jordan and Gus from Lucky Dog Clothing, and Dante Lutlow of Dante Deals. They talked about influences on the growth of their industry, how sustainability is becoming a factor in new and used clothing, and what they think needs to be done to help fix the current problem. How is sustainability important to your business? I think it's, I think it's super important, uh, sustainability to my business here. As, as we grow as leaders and business owners, I think it's important that we do our part when we can, you know what I mean, to help our environment. I would say that it's a major part of our business because there's so much clothes that get produced in the world that just gets end up getting thrown away, not bought, hold in, hold in a warehouse, and just the amount of times that clothing gets washed again and again, just ends up putting clothing fibers all over the water everywhere. Yeah, I mean, most of my business is used items, um, and that's kind of the point of sustainability, right, is not creating waste by making new things when you've got old things that are still very usable. Um, personally, I love thrifting. I love wearing used clothes. Uh, that's most of my own closet as well, so it kind of goes hand in hand. How is sustainability important to you guys personally? Uh, I mean, it's very, to me personally, to Jordan as well, it's very, very important. I mean, we got into this business thrifting, 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 and. You know, we actually like to buy used clothing because we like to have stuff be recycled and to see it again. And we want to, like, obviously there's a lot of new stuff that we get into, but, you know, it's very important to have product be used as many times as it can. And, you know. Again, I like to do my part wherever I can help the environment. Um, and, that, you know, as I get older, I feel like I appreciate my surroundings and where I'm at. and. Um, learn a little bit more about our environment. It's just something that I've, I feel like we should all think about. Um, I'm gonna continue to do my part where I can. And then, so the secondhand market has grown greatly in the past couple of years. Um, why do you think the past couple of years have been such a big growth period for it? 
Yeah, I definitely think that the stigma around used clothing has kind of gone away a little bit. Um, people want to express who they are through what they wear. And if you have the same new item that you can buy at the store down the street, then you're not really like making yourself different. You know, people can show who they are with uh, their own style by finding something that's used and being more sustainable. I think a lot of people want something that they're not going to see everybody having the same thing. Because I remember in high school, you know, when a shoe drops or when a certain, you see a certain jacket like come out at Zoomies or something, you go to school and then everybody's got the same thing. And there's also a thrill of finding something unique that you just didn't even know you were looking for. It just pops up and it's cool. You know, there's a lot of reasons. One of, one of them is sustainability. Um, other thing is just just trends and, and people I think are being more picky about what they spend their money on and in vintage is kind of an investment. You know, something you buy new might not last as long. They just don't make things like they used to, right? So I've, I'm personally like, I like timeless stuff, whether it's cars, clothing, you know, somebody asked, why is this jacket so much? And again, they just, they don't, they don't make them that way anymore. So this is a piece of history, it's nostalgia. And at the same time, I mean, relating back to sustainability, we're, we're helping not pollute, you know, our, our environment. So again, you know, that, that relates to sustainability. So this kind of falls off with that theory. Do you think people are more drawn to the sustainability factor in particular, or is the economic benefits, or do you think there's some other thing that's drawing people in? To vintage, I think, I think it's both, and I think it's other things as well. Um, I, I, I know that a lot of new vintage shops are kind of pushing the sustainability factor of the business uh, because, again, it is an important thing. But it's just kind of what's trending right now. You know what I mean? It's people are always gonna follow trends, and that's kind of you know the T-shirt market's insane. It was we, you know there was a write-up in Forbes magazine about a T-shirt going for 6K, right? Pretty insane what's going on. Honestly, I think the economic benefits are pretty huge. Uh, you know, if you want to buy an outfit, maybe for like a special occasion or, you know, something a little out there that you wouldn't want to spend a ton of money on, then, you know, you can go to a thrift store or a specialty store and find that item and not pay a ton of money for it. Um, and then, like I said earlier, that self-expression is, is pretty important. Um, you know, really showing who you are with what you wear and, and really setting yourself apart. But I do think people do care about sustainability too. You know, that's definitely become a, a kind of a thing with our generation that maybe past generations didn't think about as much as, you know, what's actually better for the planet. I would say definitely a combination for sure. I mean, um, obviously it's good to get used items because you can get them for a cheaper uh, price. But yeah, for us too, like definitely, like we we love to recycle clothing. And then nostalgia, yeah, definitely nostalgia. nostalgia. So do you think sustainability is more of a trend or is it here to stay with consumers for a long time? I think it's both. I think it is kind of a trendy thing um, to kind of, some people might use to help push the business, but if, if you're really doing that, I mean, it's amazing, that's awesome. I think it's a, it's a cool thing and we should all take a look more at that. I think that as, as, as business leaders, as we become more informed of it and how we can help, I, I think it's something that you'll see more business owners, you know, stepping up to the plate to actually, you know, do their part. Only about 15% of donated or thrown out clothing actually ends up selling again. Do you think that this is a problem in general that only a small fraction of clothing donated actually gets reused? I would say one of the problems with the used clothes market is that there's still a lot of niche items that people are looking for while most of it is just kind of generic and you know why would you buy a cheap hoodie that's used when you can just go buy a new one you know it's not very expensive anyway um, so I, I definitely think that's an issue just because of the waste that it creates so um, you know one way to combat that would be uh, by repurposing items and uh, kind of giving them a new life and creating something unique out of something that otherwise might not be. Well, I think people, I think it's kind of also on the hands of the people who are producing the clothing because so much clothing gets produced that only has a single, it's almost like a one use type clothing. Like uh, fast if you make fashion. a t-shirt, yeah, fast fashion, there's like companies like Shein, yeah, like Forever H and M, Forever 21. There's kind of bogus companies who just have the cheapest price, but basically stuff that falls apart. When I prefer when people make a garment that is made to last for years, made to be passed down, like 
companies like Filson, like they even have companies that guarantee their clothing, like Patagonia, North Face, Filson. Like if a seam busts, they'll fix it for you rather than having someone just throw it away. So I think people can do less fast fashion, even if it costs a little bit more, knowing that it's not just going to end up in the dump. A high quality product is like definitely like the trend. I think should be the trend. Uh, I mean, especially with like vintage tees, like all these vintage items are they're so unique. It's going to hold its value. It's going to be something that's um, you know you're not going to see every day. So. I th I do I do I think that's a huge problem. So I know the fashion industry is one of the most polluting, polluting in the world. And, you know, with that high percentage that you mentioned um, and the amount that have a second life with the businesses that are, you know, practicing sustainability, you know, that's that's what the mission is, is is to fix that. Um, if we if we waste less and recycle more, we can make a lasting impact on the world. Do you think the secondhand clothing market is both economically viable and sustainable long term? Like, do you think that the hype and kind of, I guess, excitement that secondhand clothing has now, do you think that will still be there in five to ten years? I, I, absol I absolutely do. I absolutely think that um, five to ten years and it's it's continued to grow. I've been I've been selling vintage in general for a long time um i had my first shop you know in 2004 and i actually wanted to do vintage at that time but it wasn't because it wasn't it wasn't cool to do vintage at that time so as 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 times go by you know it's become in the last couple of years so trendy um but also the you know more reasons right like like we mentioned we're, we're now like we're saving our environment by buying and selling and, and reusing clothing that's like filling up landfills across America and other countries. So yeah, with that and just the fact that, you know, everything comes around, the early 2000s stuff is now considered vintage. I would have never thought that that would be a thing. So probably like in 15 years, what we're doing now, you know, if you, if you start saving your hats, your new era hats right now, watching 15 to 20 years, it's gonna be a thing. I almost can guarantee that if you look about how everything is recycled already. Um, so yeah, the, my, my thought on that is that, yeah, absolutely. Definitely, yeah, I think that there's a lot of money in it. You know, it, it just keeps growing. I mean, it's how I make my living, so I sure hope so. Um, but you know, long-term, I think that people will just keep looking for new ways to express themselves and, and new styles will come out. And you know, as those new styles come out, people are looking for better deals on those, you know, kind of newer things, as well as, you know, the nostalgia factor of vintage items, I think will always be there. Um, you know, every generation kind of goes through cycles of throwing things away and then wanting them back. And so you know, I think there's a lot of value in keeping those items and then having them when the market's hot. Oh, I think I think it's yeah. definitely people are still definitely going to be buying it for a long time. I think right now people even like Goodwill for example really is just trying to squeeze the most they can out of out of stuff that's even ordinary. Yeah. But they they even have like man they have prices that are higher than ours and they take all their clothing in for donations. It's definitely here to stay. It's sure. definitely here to stay and it hasn't always been so expensive but there will always be a, a demand for things that are popular now will be vintage in the future and people will see it and remember it like, oh yeah, I used to love that in high school. I just saw it pop up in my thrift store. Like that gives me a good feeling to be able to wear something like that again. I don't see it really going down. I only see it going up personally because especially with the vintage tees, like it's just gonna become more and more and more rare. People are gonna broaden their collections. It's just gonna get crazy. I mean, we've seen it over the last couple of years. It's been insane. So I don't see it slowing down. I see it just growing. Are there any aspects of secondhand clothing that aren't sustainable or that you think could be improved? Going back to what the original, what the original ingredients were in the garments, start researching what dyes and and what was actually in the fabrication of Levi's in the 60s and 50s that made them last this long. Can we start to make clothing? Can start figuring out ways and testing garments so that they'll actually, actually last a lifetime. You got brands that started in 1868 and they have a lifetime warranty. I just exchanged my Filson, I 
turned in a Filson jacket that was from the 50s and they didn't, I didn't have to pay, they replaced the button. So just an example of that is why I'm saying that. Um, that's pretty amazing. If you, if, you, if you have a garment from the 50s and we're now in 2021 and it has a lifetime warranty, so if anything goes wrong with that product, I can send it back and they'll take care of it and send it back to me free of charge. Um, we gotta start working like that, honestly. Yeah, I think one um, kind of sustainable pattern that we've seen is uh, clothing companies like Patagonia and North Face that uh, offer lifetime warranties on their items, which means you can send it back even if it's 10 years later and they'll fix it up for you so that you'll actually want to keep wearing that item and it doesn't go to waste. Um, I know other companies have buyback programs um, where they'll repurpose those used items and, and sell them again. Um, and so we keep finding new ways to be more sustainable within uh, used clothing. And so hopefully it'll keep reducing waste in the long run. One thing was that really pisses me off that things get taxed again and again and again and again. So some of these items have been taxed four or five times. So one of the things I think the government could do to help the sustainability of it would be to stop like having a waiver on used clothing. So if people are willing to consume less, consume the same products again and again, five times on the same shirt, that ends up equaling half the, the value of the product, just in taxes, so. I think that would definitely get people to spend more on used clothing for sure. Um, Secondhand clothing certainly helps with sustainability, but it really isn't the end all be all for it. Um, what changes do you think could be made in the future to help? Really the most important thing is education. Uh, I think a lot of us just aren't educated and, and, and how much that we can do our part to contribute as leaders um, to help sustainability overall. Whether you're a consumer buying clothing or whether you're a seller selling clothing, all of us can do our part to make that change. Um, and you know, when you realize that impact, so how do, how do we share that impact amongst the masses so that we're all educated? So education is the most important thing. Um, and how, how do we educate all those people? I don't, I don't know that answer, but um, figuring out a way that we can get the word out um, would be ideal. Oh, man, there's a few things. I mean, it's hard because there's just so many clothing companies starting every single day. I think maybe somehow if there's any way to like limit the production of blank clothing and maybe put like a tax on it or something, but it's hard to say. <laughs> I kind of like, uh, one thing I, that I, I kind of like was I seen a lot of people doing like, like a pre-order and then they make a certain amount. So there's not just like dumb amounts of stuff sitting around like, oh, we thought this was going to be our best seller. There's 150 extra garments that are never going to sell. So. I do, I do like the, um, the fact that people are doing like ordering, pre-ordering process so they don't overproduce. So I've seen people do that, I think it's smart. One trend that we've seen in streetwear in recent years is limited production runs uh, that drives the value uh, resale and also just retail value of their items uh, and creates a lot of hype around it. And I think that more companies should try that, not just to make more money, but also to limit the waste in potential overproduction. Um, you know, it, it devalues your brand if you've got a lot of extra items that you have to put on clearance. And so I think that more companies are gonna start trying that more uh, limited approach and also reduce waste at the same time while, um, you know, making higher profits.